The Senate President of Nigeria, Goswe Akbabio, has lambasted and cautioned Nigerians who are living in mass for greener pasture in other countries. Now, he said they should have love for their country more than love for funds, more than love for money. Okay. I believe Nigerians who are ex ex currently ex ex exiting the country are not leaving the country simply because they don't love their country. I believe they are leaving simply because of the hardship the government of the day has inflicted on her citizens. Before I proceed with this news, permit me to ask you a question, dear Nigerians, under the sound of my voice. If you have an opportunity now to leave Nigeria to any other country, the UK, US, you know, any, any country, would you leave? If yes, what is your reason? Are you going to leave because you hate your country or you want to leave because of the hardship in the country? Permit me to also ask the senior president and Nigeria politicians. The senior president just returned to the country from his holiday. Why? He says he loved the country so much. Why didn't he look for anywhere in the country to, you know, to spend his holiday? The president of America, Joe Biden, Whenever I want to go for holiday, they, they go in any part of you know US. The last holiday was in Delaware. The president of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa, whenever I want to you know go on holiday, he go for, you know is checker for any of the resorts in South Africa, maybe Cape Town or in his in his farm. But in Nigeria, our politicians, they are children of school in Nigeria, yet they love the country. Goswe Babio. Your children, can you please tell us the school they attended in Nigeria? Any little hymn they are abroad, and yet they love the country. Okay, I don't need to say everything in the video. In the video you're about to watch, Arise TV has done justice to the comment of former governor of uh, River State and Minister of Transport, Rotimi Ameshi, admonishing Nigerians to storm the streets as a result of hardship. They've done justice to him by also reminding him that he contributed by bringing Buhari, who started the hardship that Tinubu now had it on that. They've done justice to that. They've also done justice on the new price increment on petrol that was just increased. Please, dear Nigerians, watch this video to the end. I would really like to hear the opinions of Nigerians, in this, especially Nigerians. I would really like to hear your opinion on this video. You understand? How do you feel? Watch this video to the end and please don't forget to like so that Facebook and YouTube can help us, you know, to uh, share this video. And please share it until everyone see it so that the world can be aware of what Nigeria politicians are doing to our citizens. Thanks and God bless you. I'll see you in my next video. Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited well, on Wednesday, NNPC raised the retail price of petrol to 1,030 Naira from 897 Naira per liter across some of its retail outlets, marking the second price increase within a month. The president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Joe Ajero, in a statement said that the labor union is dismayed by the petrol hike, adding that the latest hike has grossly altered the calculation of Nigerians who are still trying to adjust to the current economic realities. His statement reads in part, We challenge the government to go to the drawing board and present us with a blueprint for inclusive economic growth and national development instead of this spasmodic and ad hocism and palliative policy. It needs no stating the fact that the latest wave of increase has grossly altered the calculations of Nigerians once again at a time they were reluctantly coming to terms with their new realities. It will further deepen poverty as production capacities dip and more jobs are lost with multi-dimensional negative effects. In light of this, we urge the government to immediately reverse this rate hike as previous increases did not produce any good results. People only got poorer. But fundamentally, the government should be bold enough to tell Nigerians in advance the destination it wants to take the country. 
I believe the destination the Tinubu administration wants to take the country is to deregulate and, you know, completely remove petrol subsidy. But I mean, <laughs> economists, analysts have said, is this really what is happening at this moment? I mean, it like the NLC president has clearly stated, we are not giving more information about this deregulation. We're not told ahead of time about this deregulation. How are we going to now recalculate our budget? Every other month, there's some sort of news that comes out from the NNPC. Complete disregard for the feelings of Nigerians. But you know, President Tinubu had said when he was campaigning that, you know, he was going to, you know, reduce this petrol hike. I just want to quickly play back a video, a 2023 video, where he was campaigning and he talked about um, the fall prices. Let's, let's play that video real quickly. BBC Revival always dancing, always dancing. But yes, is this really what is happening here? How many months now? Rufai, are people actually laughing? If I can have that camera back to me, guy. But that's, is that really what is really happening? But anyways, in the meantime, former Minister of Transportation, Roti Miyamichi, has expressed his disappointment at the way Nigerians are responding to the nation's current economic challenges, stating that he had expected more visible reactions from citizens, particularly the young people. Let's take a listen. I'm angry with the citizens. Yeah, I've said it several times. You can't see a group of people stealing your money, impoverishing you. You can't buy fuel, you can't buy anything, nothing. And then you'll see, look at what happened in Nigeria. Should any, should any politician be campaigning in Nigeria? People should be angry. There should be protests. I don't even protest of, uh, uh, against anybody. It's against politicians. I will, will not vote. There will be an election in our state. That's what the people should be saying. Because the, the rate of hunger now, if people like us can't afford this, uh, you can imagine what was happening to my mother. I mean, OK, but we don't keep my mother because I, I will defend my mother. Those who don't have children like us, those my mother is still alive. And those whose mother parents are still alive, that can't afford. Uh, in fact, somebody said, well, what this government has achieved is that it has made Nigerians to be strong in the sense that Nigerians now trek. I know walking helps the heart. <laughs> so people, people have learned how to walk to their offices. All right, Dr. Mati, would he have said this if he was in this uh, administration politics? Minister, as he then was. Yes. Governor, as he then was. Yes. Rotimi Amechi. He was governor in River State. He was minister of transportation at the federal level. This hardship that we're suffering, you know, was further compounded, created, established under the eight years of somnambulism of the same government that he served under. Now he's saying people should be angry. Well, his statement could be interpreted as incitement, yep. saying that Nigerians should go to the streets. In fact, he even went further to say he, he couldn't understand why people came out to vote during a do state election, where the only legitimate way to change government, to transit from one administration to the other in Nigeria is through constitutional change of government, through elections. And here is uh, Amechi, who has been a uh, speaker in the River State House of Assembly, who has been governor for eight years, who has been minister at the federal level, saying that uh, he doesn't understand why people should vote. For his uh, personal uh, information, may he be reminded that Nigerians are indeed angry they were un angry under Buhari. Uh, Tinubu has added hunger to the uh, anger. So Nigerians are indeed angry. They are indeed uh, hungry. 
But now, you know, it's very convenient out of government to sound like a radical. I don't know whether he has joined the show. To sound like a radical. I don't know whether he has joined the show uh, political party now that he's uh, saying citizens. Mm -hmm. Is he not one of us? Mm -hmm. He's one of us. He's also a citizen. Mm -hmm. Why does he not himself go on the road <laughs> to carry placards with members of his family to say that we are hungry and we are angry? That's that about him. The second thing, NLC is saying uh, well, this and that. Well, there are certain things that uh, Joe Ajiru said that may be relevant. He says that this will further make life difficult for people. That is true. If we have to buy fuel at uh, 1,030 Naira, then of course it means life will become more difficult because there will be uh, inflation. So Joe Ajiru was commenting just like Amici on the state of the nation. He was speaking at an event. And he also went on to say uh, government should do other things. Yeah, you know, but labor itself must think out of the box. What alternatives has labor offered? Labor has been fighting this fuel price uh, matter since the days of uh, Obasanjo, 99 to uh, uh, 2007. What alternative uh, uh, ideas did labor put on the table? All these labor people, before you know it, they will become governor. Mm. Before you know it, they will become, uh, uh, they will be given appointment. Before you know it, their life will, will, be, will, will be better. They will claim they are going on strike. Which strike have they done that has been successful in terms of giving options to uh, government? You get to a point where Nigerians, uh, you know, we're even beginning to say that they no longer trust organized labor. That what is, what is labor saying? Well, I don't imagine that Joe Ajero can take a unilateral decision to challenge government, but about the hardship that Nigerians are ex experiencing, and they will experience more as a result of what has happened, I think is right on that score. Number three, it was blaming NMPC Limited. I said earlier, when we discussed this subject, that NMPC Limited is, a, is now a public, uh, a, a limited liability company. It's also a marketer, in the space, like all other persons, what NMPC Limited has said is that it will no longer be the uh, main off-taker. The arrangement was they will off-take mm. and then they will sell to the uh, distributors within the market. Now NMPC Limited is saying, let everybody go to Dangote Refinery to go and take the products. They, they are not going to stand in between to provide subsidy of 134.16 uh, Naira. They also have a stake in uh, Dangote Refinery, 7.25% uh, equity stake in Dangote Refinery. But I imagine that in the days to come, you know, more details will come out. And the final question is, why are the refineries not working? I thought they said the Portaco Refinery has been uh, mechanically completed. This mechanical completion is taking almost a whole year and nothing is coming out from there. In December 2023, they said they were producing at least 60,000 uh, 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 barrels per day mm -hmm. from that uh, refinery. Where is that uh, 60,000 liters? Yeah. Other questions. We don't even know how much fuel we consume on a daily basis in Nigeria. The figures keep changing. 43,000, 50 million, uh, uh, 60 million. Nobody knows. In a country that is supposed to be run by data, now we will be uh, some uh, importers apart from NMPC Limited, will be taking fuel from Togo. Yeah. Which fuel are they producing in Togo? They will steal Nigerian crude to, uh, to Togo. We will go and be buying from Togo. We will be buying the fuel from other countries. So mm. it's a very messy situation. I hope someone someday will clear the mess. Yeah. And where in all of this is the Nigerian midstream uh, and downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency, which is the agency that fixes prices. They are busy playing possum in, uh, in uh, NMDPRA. They yes. are playing possum. Yes. I mean, one thing I took away from Joe Ajero's statement was that, you know, this whole inflation, and it has basically re calculated our budget at this point. I want to pull off a graphic about, you know, um, what Nigerians were spending before uh, Tinubu came into power. And here you can see it here. Uh, they said before, sardine was, um, what was it, 300 naira and peak milk? 
was 250 but Saudi now is what 1800 naira i mean i can't really see the graphics there yeah. if you can help out but I, yes so so I so i mean that diapers to that the diapers <laughs> for you but but you can see the disparity here yeah. it is huge i mean it is really huge yes now sardine is 1008 pig milk is 1000 spaghetti 1000 derica of beans 2,500. I mean, this is an estimation we did with our interns. They went ahead to find the prices. Tomatoes. I think that there was a, a bit of relief with tomatoes recently. I don't know. But I mean, look at the difference at this point, uh, Rufai. Inflation. You see, go and put your mad address. Mm -hmm. Because our chief, Ulisha Moshoba, said, Tinubu must do another four years. You know, he's a Yoruba man. All of you people that are eating on Tinubu, Elo for Kobale. You see, you cannot ascribe to malice what you can explain with incompetence. And every day, where we try to explain the incompetence of the Nigerian states, mm. politicians tag us as people that have malice against them or their political party. Mm -hmm. But history and time will vindicate us that we are indeed patriots mm -hmm. for the growth of this country. All of this the NNPC is doing is a game. The NNPC has not told us the full truth about this subsidy matter. The same NNPC that denies that they were owing international creditors or those that sold them crude. The same NNPC that has not been able to give us when the Dangote and uh, when the refinery, Portaco refinery will be completed. I don't, sometimes I blame labor, but sometimes I don't want to blame labor in this because the president lied to labor. He told them that the protocol refinery will be ready by December. Those were the part of the first agreement they had when they had the first strike. Mm. And those were part of the agreement labor acceded to, to be able to let things slide because the president told them it will be ready. Do you know when Mr. Femi Falano went to sent a letter to the company that were the contractors that were doing the Portacot refinery. What happened? Mm -hmm. The contractor said they can't tell him when it's going to be ready. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of lies. And OG, I still keep repeating. Subsidy has not been removed because that's a new lie they told us today. It's another lie to be able to buy time before they give the next increments. Oji, do you know if you're buying 1,030 naira per liter? Mm. Do you know how much that's going to be in dollars? That's 0 0.64 cents. All our neighboring countries sell beyond one dollar per liter at the pump price. That's to show you subsidies still being paid. But they will keep the lies on because of the games that are going on. Till today, the same NMPC is not telling you how much we are consuming. Mm -hmm. The same NMPC, and that's why when people are saying NMPC, it's a, a price, it's a, it's a, a marketer, it's a lie. They can change nomenclature, but they can't deceive us. Which other oil marketers have a right to be able to burn money with their NMPC does? The same NMPC that bought four trillion on refineries that are not working. Not be me talking. Go and check NMPC's books. They showed us. Like fella will say, I will open book for you. Machine will free. I will open book for NMPC. They bought four trillion on refineries that are not working. Is that one not more than enough to pay the subsidies? Is this not the same NMPC that has been paying for refineries that have not been working all these years that are moribund? So NMPC should please and see, stop bringing in the regulators, the NNDPR and everything. No, it is NMPC that fixes the price. It's not the regulators. The regulators should fix price on paper, but on paper it's NMPC. Why is it that it's NMPC petroleum station? When they increase price, prices go up. Let's call it speed is speed. NMPC has been the real cause of most of these problems. I mean, I'm not blaming them and miss. We have empirical facts to back it up. They have not shown good faith. They've constantly told porkies to a lot of Nigerians. And let us call it speed is speed. Right. You will see when the increment will start again. All right. Except they see, oh, free market has taken over. All of a sudden, the NMPC that couldn't tell you all this while how much they were used to subsidize fuel now told you that uh, they will have removed the one at the three naira that they are paying in subsidy. Now, subsidy has been finally removed. Mm -hmm. Be deceiving us.
What happened to the refinery again? The uh, one that was happened? close to in what August, happened? wasn't it? Last uh, month. What did they, they say? They, 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 in August, yeah. when they got to August, they said it won't produce again. Again. Then when they wrote the uh, people that are doing the contract work in the refinery letter, they said they would tell Femifalano on the 2nd of October, the time they will finish. On the 2nd of October, they said they can't disclose the time. That's right. today now. And it's over 44 months. We paid over $1.5 billion yeah. for that refinery just to keep working. Yeah. Must be some solution. Meanwhile, Senate President Godswi Lakpabu has said that Nigerians should place their love for country above financial gain. Akpabu made the comments on the floor of the Senate on Tuesday while commenting on a motion seeking to address mass migration of Nigerians. Let's take a look. And to say that even as we are speaking now, we are seeing some people who are under different guises traveling outside. So the brain drain is a big problem, not just in the educational sector, particularly in the health sector. It's affecting us a lot. Uh, the greatest uh, professionals in medicine in the United States of America, from what I read, some people say we have almost uh, 22,000 uh, health workers in the United States of America who are Nigerians, and they are doing extremely well. I've seen that from different reports. And uh, as of today, uh, the country is rather losing the expertise. If they acquired those expertise and returned to Nigeria, it would have been better. But I think also the conditions of service are, are, are quite responsible. Uh, you know, but, but I believe people should uh, place love for their country above financial gains. Love for country. Let me take reactions. This is from Boma, who wrote, Deceitful tales of lies. Let him and the NAS members earn 70,000 Naira as their salary. Then Nigerians will put love for their country, Nigeria. Rebuild our educational institution and ensure their children attend public schools in the country. Then we shall love this country. Another Twitter user wrote on X, love for the country is never the problem. The problem in Nigeria is the poor are getting poorer and the rich getting richer. Inequality and marginalization can never bring love. Everyone deserves financial gain. Our needs are far above what we can afford. Love for country. Hmm. Uh, our favorite Nigerian wife, I know you love our country, but you know, it is tough at this time where, you know, our budget has been rejigged by force by the federal government of Nigeria. Amechi said, Trekaton, I am, I am part of the people trekking at this point because I mean, yes, well, I'm going to get a fit from it, but come on. She's stating the obvious yes. by saying she loves our country. I, I mean, Somebody I know she loves our country. Somebody will come from Zimbabwe <laughs> yeah. to go and yes, marry she loves our country. Nigeria from a Bible. <laughs> I want love can be more than that. <laughs> But before I come to you, let me take this, uh, I mean, together with this. You know, um, only recently, the Minister of Health, Dr. Ali Pate, recently spoke about health tourism and Tinubu going for medical treatment abroad. He spoke to journalist Adiola Baihun. Let's take a look. Health tourism is not a phenomenon that is limited to Nigeria or Africa. There are people who leave the United States and go to East Asia to get medical care. There are people who leave the United Kingdom and go to Africa for medical care. And there are Nigerians who choose, because of all kinds of reasons, to go abroad for medical care. There are many leaders and people from the Africa region who come to Nigeria for medical treatment. Really? Yes, they are. So what, what will it take for our president to see what these people see in Nigerian I think health for uh, I health think sector? You are keen in personalizing it with just one individual. The well, phenomenon of medical the tourism. President of the, the country. The, the phenomenon of medical tourism is a global phenomenon, and you cannot limit it just one individual. What we are saying, and what President Tinubu is trying to do, is to transform Nigerian healthcare system so it works for everyone. Our favorite Nigerian wife. I hope you heard that sound by loud and clear. I, heard it loud I mean, and clear, okay. we, should, we, we shouldn't we shouldn't um, tackle the president for going on medical tourism, but he's trying to transform the medical um, 
system here yeah. and people are coming to Nigeria for medical tourism while our president is going out. Love for country, um, yep. our favorite Niger wife. You know, there's a, a saying I love very much which says that a nation usually imbibes the spirit of its leader. And so for me, it's quite profound that, um, you know, God's will, like Mabia, will be talking about, uh, you know, you, you should love your country more than financial gain, because I feel that conversation needs to begin there in the Senate uh, with his colleagues, uh, you Absolutely. know, in the House of Representatives with his colleagues, in the executive with his colleagues. Let's have that conversation at the leadership le level and say, hey, my comrades here at the table, can we rather um, let's choose our country over financial gain. Mm -hmm. You know, was it last month or a couple of months ago, uh, President Joe Biden took his two weeks vacation and he went to Delaware. And what they did uh, in, in Delaware is they sent pictures of him on the beach every day hanging out with his wife. And he didn't go anywhere. He didn't travel abroad. He didn't go anywhere internationally. Here in Africa, I, I always have to commend South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, who always looks for a resort somewhere in South Africa. When he takes his annual leave, he'll either go to his farm in Palapala or he'll go to Cape Town or he'll go to Port Elizabeth but he always keeps it very local and it's such a great opportunity for us to package our country as well and to, to show the world what we have but you know for us to now sit and look at the people who are doing all they can grappling with exactly. do you know what it means to wake up one day and suddenly find out that fuel has just gone up yeah. and nobody even has the courtesy, no courtesy. to to send out a press release or whatever ahead it's, of by time, just, hey. it's by just it's by just that you see they said the fuel has gone up or people will start calling each other fuel has gone up have you heard we didn't even know the real price until journalists started driving around to the different fuel stations to find okay this is the development that has happened so Somebody whose, whose salary has not changed, whose income has not changed, is now battling with the reality of how this is going to impact their daily bread. And this person now finds a better opportunity somewhere where they can make something of themselves and look after their families and support their families and get them a good education and get them not have to worry about your children drinking clean water. Just something as basic as your children drinking clean water. So, you know, it's very unfair for us to now try and blackmail people who are just seeking self-preservation yeah. yeah. and now say that you need to love your country more. That's the first point. So, and the second point is that we also need to separate love for country, patriotism, from love for government or current administration. People are allowed to dislike the administration in power. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't love their country. Yes. We have to separate those I things. I like that. Very well said, our favorite mm -hmm. Niger. I love the word that you use, blackmail. Dr. Abati, a comment from you. Okay, no, she just made a yes. point. Love of country is to be separated from love of the administration. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, politicians confuse the two. Yes. They think that if you criticize government, then you don't uh, like your country. Nationalism is different. Absolutely the principle different. in Latin maxim is pro patria mori e duce decorum it is fit and uh, proper for one to live and die for one's country that's nationalism mm -hmm. and i'm sure that there are more than enough nigerians who love this country the ones who japa who leave nigeria it's not because they don't live, love nigeria it's because circumstances here have been made difficult by the politicians that uh, uh, leaders. Mm -hmm. The question to pose is that do the politicians, the people in positions of power, do they love Nigeria? That's the question. Because if they love Nigeria, they will not be punishing Nigeria in this manner. Yeah. They told us, President Tinubu told us, hell of a convale. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we are all in a state of anxiety, that is what it particularly is. on this occasion of World Mental Health Day. Yeah. The entire country is suffering from mass psychosis. Yeah. Because people are not happy, people are depressed, people can no longer buy basic necessities, they cannot feed. It is the leaders of Nigeria who say we should sacrifice and love our country. They are the ones who should make necessary sacrifices and love the country mm -hmm. and identify with the long-suffering masses of Nigeria who, as I said, are likely to suffer more mm -hmm. as the social effect mm -hmm. of this hike in petroleum prices and rising expectations and the hike in everything will begin to affect us. Right. We who do not have access to yachts, 
do not have access to what is that their vehicle, uh, brand new SUVs at state expense, yeah, and at uh, state you expense. know uh, foreign vacations at state expense, you know foreign medical trip at state expense. Mm -hmm. No, they must identify with the people. Mm -hmm. That's when they can talk about love of country. Love for country, different from nationalism. Well, let us 